of work. Today, our talk is actually related to RRF grant. Of course, these are for those lucky ones who already received RRF. And once you got that money, really you need to know how to spend it and according to the guideline. And uh, what I'm about to tell you is, if you cannot spend it according to the guideline, you can end up returning that money. And with these kind of grants, the government are definitely going to put it into, put it in system and put it in program to do what we call the compliance audit. So it is important for every one of us to understand how to manage and how to use the RF. So we are putting this together for our clients and also people who are out there already received the money and knows that you need to understand these key points we're talking about. So let's get going. And our talk today is guidelines for RF grant accounting. accounting. It is important. And I want to give a lot of information to you. But again, and I do have to mention to you that whatever you hear on the internet, they may not be right. They may not be right because the timing could be different. So knowledge outdates very quickly, especially with pandemic this last 18 months. Things are changing so fast. New regulation comes out. And in my slides, there are areas I will say to you that I don't know how exactly it will happen because we're waiting for guidelines, you know, stuff like that. So you really want to take it with a grain of salt and a do not peanut butter approach on things, what you hear from internet. And uh, from our end, we do, we do the best job we could to get you the information, provide that to you. We hope that we're being seen as value provided and um, hopefully you enjoy, right? Let's just recap about RRF. What is RRF? Restaurant Revitalization Fund. And the American Rescue Plan Act established Restaurant Revitalization Fund to provide funding to help restaurants and other eligible businesses to keep their door open. The program uh, provides restaurants with funding that equals to what they lost comparing to 2019. And recipients are required, required to, um, to repay the funding as long as funds are used for eligible uses no later than March 11, 2023. The recipients are not required to repay the funding. So it is a money given to you as long as you spent before March 11, 2023. So not next year, the year after March 11, and uneligible uses. So this is the key. I know your question to me will be, what is the eligible use of funds? And you know, our webinar are listened and watched by many people. Some of you, I know when you go onto our YouTube channel to go to look into the prior webinar we did, you're probably listening and you're not looking. I always tell folks, what there is nothing to look and we're not a movie star grade. So we don't, you know, our look is not significant. We just want to give you the content. So I'm going to read it out to you because you don't, not necessarily watching the slides and watching me talking. So the following expenses are eligible to use funds if incurred between, hear me correctly, if incurred between February 15, 2020 and March 11, 2023, okay? So these are the following mentioned on the guidelines. And you may say, well, the category is so wide and vague. I don't know, but this is what we have. So I want you to hear this. Business payroll cost, including sick leave, means that if you as employer, you pay for sick leave, your, your staff is sick, but you still pay for them. And that is included. Payments on business mortgage obligation and means that interest and the loan, uh, the loan principal and the interest, that's obligation for mortgage. 
business rent payment, okay? And the business debt, both principal and the interest, business debt and the business mortgage are different, right? Business mortgage normally are tied to an asset and the business debt could be your current uh, capital funds, your line of credit, things like that. And the business debt, both principal and the interest and the business utility payment, business maintenance expense, so here you go. So a lot of times people goes, well, maintenance, what do you mean by that? What if I have a truck and it's so broken, my maintenance was $25,000. As long as it's maintenance and that is deductible, but to, to buy a new truck, that could go into the area where are you, are, are, you, uh, are you expanding your business or you are actually maintaining your business? So we'll talk, we, we will reach that point when we, going through uh, our pre prepared slides. So business and maintenance expense, construction of outdoor seating, hear that? So not construction of your inside, but construction of outside because COVID and you know, the government understand that for restaurants to survive, if they have an outdoor seating that they're establishing and fixing and providing, that is included. Business supplies, and that including pr protective equipment and the cleaning material, business food and beverage expenses, including raw materials, covered supplier cost, and the business operating expenses. Covered supplier cost and the covered supplier cost, which are the one that set necessary for your for the run of your business. So note here that you know, the past due expenses are also eligible for spending. Past due means that, for example, on February the 15th, 2020, and you have so many bills that you didn't pay, okay, past due. So it says that the past due expenses are eligible if they were incurred beginning on February the 15th, 2020, and ending on March 11th, 2023. Okay, so what they mean by incurring means that if you paid that, if you paid those expenses during that time, say it is the rent from prior and then you paid that within your February the 15, 2020 and ending of March 11, 2023 is a past due bills, that is also eligible expense. All right, so our next slides will give you that will SBA require you to demonstrate how all grant funds were used on eligible expenses. In other words, would SBA send a letter to me say, hey, you know, you got RF. I want to see how you spend every penny of that fund. Would they do that? The answer is yes. And a yes said many times. So for sure. All right. By December 31st, 2021, which is this December coming in, the recipients, the restaurant owners, must report through the application portal how much of the award has been used against each eligible use category. You hear that? So you have a reporting requirement. If you got RAF, by the end of this year, you need to go back onto your portal to report how much you spent so far by each category. So if you apply that grant by your CPA firm or by your sister-in-law and you, you need to get hold of that portal information so you can go back in to fill in those forms. If you want the CPA firms to help you and know that there is a, there is a thing that you didn't have it before and you need to do, okay? If you use up all the funds by that time, you will certify in the portal that the proceeds has been used on eligible expenses. Those who have not used up their funds by December 31st, 2021 will be required to complete annual reporting submissions until the funds is fully used up. So basically every December 31st, 2021, 2022, you will report. Then of course the funds ends in March of 2023, right? You have to spend it all by March, 2023. So by the time you report December 31st, 2022, 
you really should already know that you're going to spend that money by March 11, 2023. So there is a annual reporting requirement. SBA reserves the right to request supplemental documentation needed to, to verify your submission. So you can put whatever you want on the portal, but if you don't have backups on those numbers, SBA can come back to you ask you for that so that's what i what they mean by reserve the right they want to they want to tell you that they can do that anytime they want it other consideration though it is important what happens if i cannot spend all the all the rf money by the end of the cover period when is the cover period march 11 2023 okay so by the end of march 11 2023 I could not spend it. If you cannot use up all the grant funds or um, you closed your shop, you permanently cease the operation, then you must return the money back to the federal government. You, you see how vaguely uh, we put up there saying federal government, because we really don't know whether the money you should give back to IRS or you should give back to SBA. We don't, you know, there's no guidance on that one yet. But right now, let's say if today you close the shop and you got RF, you need to return that money. And I would be calling SBA to figure out where to return that money. But right now, you know that you know, the government wants you to return the money if you didn't spend or you closed the company early, okay? Then the other, the other thing we want to mention to you is, can I pay towards my SBA loan and the PPP loan and the EIDL loan? The answer to that is yes, the monthly payment of these loans, principal and the interest are eligible expenses. See how how the, how the answers is saying your monthly payments, the answer didn't say that go ahead and pay it in full, right? Because it's not, those are not eligible expense. Eligible expenses only include from February, 2020 to March, 2023, March 11, 2023. February is February 15 of 2020. Um, so we answer some, we answer some, we, we kind of warmed up to what RF is. And now we understand that, you know, particularly for business loan and mortgages, and you know that you can pay it on the principal interest. Uh, unlike IRS, they only allow you to deduct interest, right? But RF, they allow you to use the full, full amount to, to use up the fund. But you really need to budget. So this is where I want to share with you a resources, very useful, and I want you to see them. So see, budget. And then if you, ha if you haven't really done that, boy, you really need to do that, okay? Because this is a lot of dollars you have on your hand and you want to make sure that you use it properly so you don't have to pay it back. You want to create an RF budget that specifically pairs the IRF funds to the eligible expenses to ensure that each dollar is tracked to expense category with a date of the transaction. I am not talking about taxes right here. I'm not talking about you need to give me your accounting book so I can do your taxes. This is a whole separate accounting. This is a whole separate way to treat, to tie up your sources funds with the expenses that you have, okay? Though the expenses category are generally broad and you will want to ensure that you correctly classify all of your transactions. So there is a link right here. Did you see that? This restaurant, uh, restaurantsact.com backslash RRF backslash. And now let me, uh, let me, and the slice for now, because I want to walk you to that uh, spreadsheet. So this is the copy of the first page of that spreadsheet. And I'll show you how that works in Excel. But look at this. This is done by ANCPA and with National Restaurant Association. I, uh, you know, I trust those authoritative resources. AICPA authoritative. It is the accounting 
principal accounting guidelines. If you can get it from AICPA, and that's that's where you can trust. A national restaurant um, association is the uh, a trade association, nonprofit association. Really had done a very good job during this pandemic time, and they are joined force developed this for us for all the restaurant owners. You don't have to rely on your CPA firm. You can do this. In fact, if you work with your CPA firm on accounting services, you can work with them, utilize their resources, get this done for you too. If you can submit something from here in this format and you're golden, I think you did a good job. And I think the SBA will be satisfied to see you are doing that. So look at, um, let me just add my slides right here because I want to show you that Excel. See, um, I am, uh, am I sharing? Let me see. Yeah, we see it. Uh, you see it? Okay, so I am sharing, that's good, yes. Um, see, this is the Excel, I downloaded it just like that. And did you see on the bottom, this is summary. You don't put in any number because they already protected. So you, you, don't, you don't do anything over here, but you come over here to do expense tracker, okay? So I'm just gonna give you an example. And for date, what I am doing is, remember it is from February 15, 2020 to uh, March 11 and the 2023. So today is August 21st, 2021. So I'm going to put in my date, 21, 2021, okay? So that's my date. And I'm going to say that, you know, it is uh, my business expense and the eligible business expense, say I'm gonna say that I paid community CPA a fee, all right? So invoice number 1234 and expense. Then I'll say $4,500. And then your expense category. So now you're going to come into expense category. Expense category is this all here. All right. So they want to know that which category that belongs to. So, you know, you look at utility. No, CPA firm is not utility. And uh, my accountant is not that. Food, beverage, no. So you go down this list to figure out where that belongs to. So you can come over here, right? Here it says accounting. Look at that, accounting, training, legal, marketing. So, oh, I can put that under that category. That category is business operating expense. So I come over here and I would classify that as a business operating expense. Did you see that? It is so small, but I did it. So the amount, full amount, right? because that's, you know, I was trying to get my RF calculated, right? So that's what happened. So when you did that, you come to the summary, you see how they have a business operating expenses already here for you. And you want to put in your entity name and you also know the total of the amount. So when you got the total amount, this is the uh, total RF received amount. So we go to the expense tracker. Oh, it's right here. We didn't see it. So we're going to put in received 500,000. I'm going to put that in here. And so now it says that I have left. So I still go back to here. So you see, I have left that amount. So you want to use this Excel to really track. You see how, you know, I say to you that is not exactly accounting. It is really, it is really you be do a uh, be diligent of how you spend the money. So this is the one, this is the one Excel I want to show you that is on the internet and it is meant for everyone and meant for you to go to find, uh, to find on here. So remember our slides right here is, is the uh, restaurant, restaurantsact.com and the forward slash right backslash forward slash rf forward slash so that way you will get there all right so now let's continue with our journey on our talk here so we showed you how you can account your expenses and know that how much you have left this is how you will do it 
And now let's give you a couple of tips on the accounting and the record keeping, important, okay? And we will wrap up our talk here with frequent asked questions because we have those excellent questions. And I think you need to know those questions, but let's look at what we need to uh, record keep and what we need to account. Retain all records submitted with the application. You know how um, you had a condition, you had a reason to receive those funds, okay? And how did you get the funds? How did you put in your application? And that record you need to have. And I want to um, say to you that some of the folks, they did the uh, application through, you know, brother-in-law or someone, they could not find them anymore. And if that's the case, you need to start tracking down how to log back in your portal right now. Remember in December, you need to go back in the portal. You need to do the annual summary. So if you don't know your portal, what are you gonna do? So make sure that you keep the record. If you did not apply, someone else applied on your behalf. And you to say that, oh, I don't have it because someone else did it on my behalf. That's not your excuse when you get um, compliance reviewed. So you want to make sure you get that, okay? So that's that one. The number two is retaining all records supporting the application were not submitted, including information supporting the date the business began making sales. It is so important because the calculation was based on that. So you want a supporting document. How did you support? Maybe it is the first um, registration with the state for sales tax. Maybe it is your uh, formation documentation of the company, or maybe it's your food license, or maybe it's your credit card merchant account when that got registered, right? You got to have information to prove that. How the grant amount was calculated. Come on, the table one, two, three. How did you do that? That you need to keep. Information demonstrating a assertion of priority for rewarding the grants. So if you are minority and you know you you checked one of those boxes veterans and the women and the minority disadvantaged group then you need to prove that maybe your driver license would prove that however you determine and that is something you need to prove because if you don't have those advanced status and you got the funding then uh, you know that could be a mistake or maybe the status was checked um, mistakenly, so you got the funding, then that probably means you don't qualify for the funding and that funds need to be returned. So just be really careful. You know, in, in my own view, I would rather not getting anything if I am not qualified. Because if I'm not qualified, somehow a mistake happened, I got more or I got funding, I would not be able to sleep because it, 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 it cannot make me comfortable. And I always say to folks that 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when we do business, maybe our parents' generation, they can get away from certain things. Not anymore. With technology, it is only making people more honest. And technology is making government compliance more convenient. It's very easy. It is not as hard as you think to listen to our parents' generation talk about how they did whatever they did, irrelevant. In this time, you want to listen to Community CPA. We understand technology. We understand you know, how a person can create legacy through a proper doing because uh, a one-time uh, windfall would not save anybody's life. It doesn't work that way. So. Those assertions are important and make sure you have record for that. Record related to eligible expenses, right? And you know, you can put a community CPA's invoice in there as one of the eligible uh, expense. But what if that expense is because we're working on your divorce calculation? That would not be relevant. You know, it is not a relevant operating expense. So really, you have to look at that to see what is the eligible expense. And the information regarding the determination of affiliates and affiliated businesses, because 
there is a special requirement for SBA to fund you and with that status. And if you misrepresent that status, it is not difficult at all for SBA to know. The only reason when, that, when the portal opens and they let you do it because they want to speed up the process, they didn't want to dig into your relationship, whatever. So, but that supposedly to be a correct statement and just make sure and those information you also have ownership share for the um, the ownership shares for owners listed on the um on the in the portal when you apply that also need to be verified and of course you can do it wrong maybe you are not minority owned but you just put you know uh, give your give your spouse uh, maybe give your um, a lady spouse, a bigger share, so you qualify for minority owned, but on your tax return, you have been always doing 99% on yourself, not your spouse, um, that would be an issue, right? So you want to know that it is not because SBA doesn't know, it's because they didn't have the time to turn around to verify that, but when they come on to compliance review, yeah, they have time they can verify everything because the government data is definitely shared. Number three, protect your small business administration account information, that login, that email address. And also, if you didn't really have it because someone else did it for you, please now figure it out because you need to do that annual report, folks. We can't get away from not doing that, all right? Unless... Well, there is not even unless, even, and, you know, even if you spend it all already, you still have to do it. You have to go into the portal to certify. So please. Number four, plan how, um, um, plan how you spend the money on the eligible expenses. Any payment made with RF, um, if it is not, authorized by the agreed upon usage. If it is outside of, for example, you use the money instead of renovating outside of the seating area, and you also change the roof on top of your, your building. And that would not be eligible expense. So just be really careful, okay? And because they can request you to repay and you can be subject to federal fraud investigation. Federal fraud investigation is a real thing. I don't want you to think that I never heard of it. And then there is nobody got that, not true. I mean, um, 20 some years practice in this industry, I have seen people subject to federal fraud investigation many times, many times. And I would say that the process is very um, methodically going through. So the, the people, the, the federal agent who come through to do these investigations are knowledgeable. And they're not someone that, you know, you just, you just lie about, they don't see things. No, they see a lot more things than you know. So uh, we, we want to make sure that and you, um, when you have the payment made, so every payment is eligible expense. So this is where our number four tips are. Number five, map out the co covered period, right? Because it is kind of weird period. It is not 12 months in 2020. It is 12 months in 2021. It is 12 months in 2022. It is not 12 months in 2023. So it is not the same. And accounting is not exactly the same because your accountant actually doing 12 months, right? So you cannot use 2020, 12 months to say that's what that is. No, you have to start from February the 15th. So it's not 12 months. Then when you certify everything for 2022, December 31st, and you have from January the 1st, 2023 to March 11, 2023 to figure out the rest of the the balance and then certify that is all spent a lot of work, okay? A business that choose to use RF money for payroll in 2021. So this is a, this is a very often seen situation. If you are going to use RF money for 2021 payroll and you should not be 
applying for ERC credit. And you may, you may say that, well, you know, if I'm not qualified, I'm not going to get it. So I applied, I got it. And nobody, they didn't bother with me about RF. So I, you, if government gave me, that is, means I'm, uh, I qualify. That's not true. Okay, that's not true. Especially if you work with a large payroll company. So the problem with a large payroll company is that they make you sign a statement saying that you know you're eligible and you know that you should apply. So that is all encompass, right? Because they are taking the risk away from them applying for that. IRS is not going to call SBA goes, did you get RF? Do you know they use RF in 2021 or not? That is not gonna happen. So you need to know that if you have RF fund and you use it for 2021, you use it for payroll, you should not touch ERC, okay? I'll say that again, you cannot touch ERC when you use RRF to pay for your payroll expense. Just very simple. They don't come together. Now, if you got a second round of PPP, that applies too. You cannot use PPP at the same time um, saying that is eligible expenses for RRF. So that doesn't work, right? So make sure and you take care of these duplicated benefit and do not claim them all, only claim one of them. The last one for our tip is to keep in touch with us. Yes, so true, right? You know, at least one thing you know about us, it's not like we know everything from the get-go, no, but one of our job is to be updated with knowledge. So because it is part of our job, because folks are living um, with this type of job descriptions and we go for information, we put together a webinar and it is our responsibility to learn. So when that is part of the operation, then obviously when you get in touch with us, we share with you the knowledge we learn through our work, right? We also have a lot, lot of clients and the clients doing that helps us to get a feel of what you need. This is why our webinar is practical. People commenting on our webinar saying that, you know, it is so practical and that you, you guys just, you guys talk about the real thing. I don't have to be sitting there for half an hour and I still haven't really getting into the real content yet. We will never do that to you. We know how busy the entrepreneurs are and we're busy and you're busy. We want to bring you the best. So the next few slides are questions we got from our clients. We think this is great question. So we want to bring it out. And so just to answer it black and white for you. So that way you don't sit there wonder, right? Will the RRF be taxed as a federal gross income? If you're asking me that question, you see how your question is focusing on federal? You're saying, hey, is RRF gonna be taxed as a federal gross income? and will not be. It is not taxed as a taxable income. So let's think about accounting in this content, okay? And see, we left out the state, okay? Later on, there is another question related to state, and we're just talking about federal. Now, if it is not taxable gross income, when you got the deposit into your checking account, then you have a debit on the bank. I'm talking about accounting. What is your credit? Is your credit income? Of course not, right? So it doesn't go to your income statement. Your income did not increase. So what do you credit? Because it's not taxable income. So you are crediting your equity account. You're not crediting loans because you don't have to pay it back. And if, of course, if you spend on eligible expenses, right? If you finish them by March 11, 2023. But otherwise, you don't pay it back. So you credit. The credit is equity, not sales. Don't count on sales tax on there either. So 
I have seen mistakes from the restaurant owner and they are actually paying sales tax on RF because they put the money into sales. So that's wrong, right? So this is a question we often get. So our answer is no, it will not be included as taxable gross income by IRS. Will I be able to deduct federal tax expenses paid with RF funds? Yes, okay. The law states that no deduction shall be denied, no tax attribute shall be reduced, and then no basis increase shall be denied by reason of exclusion from gross income. So to make it more Chinglish, this is English, okay? But make it more Chinglish. You know how when you have tax dues, like when you pay taxes to IRS, is your personal expense. You pay it out of your personal account. It is your money paying taxes. It's the money that you already paid taxes, paying taxes, right? Am I right? Okay. Now, the RF is treated not as taxable income. They're treated as your equity. It is treated as the money that you already paid taxes for. Then if you have a tax bill to pay, of course, you can use that to pay tax bill. That's just how that logic goes, right? And I am saying this, this is what it is right now. If someone wake up to the truth, decided that, oh, well, it is non-taxable for income tax purposes, but we like to restrict putting on more rules to it, it's possible. You know, the, between IRS and SBA, they're always learning too. So they may come back to do something different, but right now, this is correct, okay? The answer is yes, you can use that to pay taxes. All right, can a state tax RF funds or disallow standard and necessary tax deductions on expenses paid with the funds? So can state government come into your restaurant and look at your RRF funds goes, that is not eligible. This one is eligible. Oh no, this is taxable. Your whole thing is taxable. Can state do that? Okay. A state may impose an elig eligible entity state tax liability associated with the entity's acceptance of RRF may. It will be important for entity. It will be important for you. When we say entity, we're talking about your business, okay? It is important for your business to be aware of your state tax and how they decide on that. Most of the state follows the federal guidelines. If the federal government say eligible, it's eligible. If the federal government say no, it's no. So most of the state, but you can never say never. So make sure if you are not sure you can always you can always come to help to let us help you and um, you know subscribe to our business consultation service i mean we actually on, uh, on zoom we actually charge um our client less than doing a face-to-face -face meeting so you can literally get help on your particular questions for your particular state obviously it is by the state and the federal government cannot, cannot force state to do what they want to do. So the state has right to follow federal or to impose new rules. How are different types of tax entities account for RF? Such a brilliant question. It is a question that it would take a whole afternoon to digest. But one thing I want you to kind of remember, most of our restaurants are either sole proprietors, um, you file Schedule C on 1040, or you are, you are uh, LLC filing partnership or S Corp or C Corp, right? So these are tax entities. So those tax entities will treat RF differently. For sole proprietorship, the IRS, the RF funds would not even make on to your Schedule C. But the portion of expenses that IRF pay, RF fund paid for should not be showing up on your Schedule C either. 
So it is treated as your own money. It's no different from the money you made from the business. So of course, the money you made from the business, you already paid taxes, is sitting on your business account or on your personal account. So if you're a sole proprietor, RF is just that way. It is going to be the money in your bank account as if you already paid taxes for. And if you happen to, oh, because you, you took away all the uh, expenses, so maybe your restaurant ended up making a lot more money than other years because RF paid a bunch of expenses. If that's the case, you're gonna have a bigger tax bills, right? Because you pay social security, Medicare, and self-employment taxes, income tax. So your, your tax bill is bigger in 1040. You can write a check from your bank account to pay. And that funding source can be RF. All right, so what if you're running a partnership? The partnership, same thing. The money comes in and it become a deposit, but it is not going into income statement. But the expenses you paid through RF fund should never land in the income statement either. They should not be there. So you're gonna end up making more money in the year, more, more money than before in this particular year. And then you can pay taxes because those, uh, your partnership, so you take K1 to your 1040 and you pay taxes for it, right? Mm -hmm. But that funds actually stay as your partnership basis. It is almost like, let's say if you are partnership 50-50, you got $200,000 from RF, then each one of you would actually have $100,000 in your capital account because it is non-taxable. It is treated as money that already paid taxes for. All right, as corporation similar, it will become the shareholder basis. So you don't want to move the money into income. And then, um, you know, you say, well, I want to move that into income because I want to count all my expenses. So it's offset netted to each other, but that's a wrong way to account for it. It is not taxable income. It need to come back into the balance sheet, become your shareholder basis. All right, and with a C Corp, if it is C Corp, then it has become the additional paid in capital, right? That's where you're gonna account for them. It is not in your income. It is increase your bank and also increase your paid in capital. So that's where, that's how we account the RF in each tax entity. I know I've gone through really quick, but I'm telling you what I am saying. It is very useful for the accountant. If you are not doing accounting with community CPA, you're doing accounting on your own or with your accountant, just go onto our YouTube channel and copy this uh, link, this video, have your accountant listen to it. If there is any update come back from the government and uh, you know take away what I said today to be the right format and I will come back to, to update the knowledge. But as of today, that is correct. All right, so additional considerations and tips from us. If using the RF grants for business debt service, just remember it is only be used for principal interest payments for the for the uh, for that period. It is not to be used to pay off the entire loan. Got that? And the past due expenses are eligible if they were incurred between February 15, 2020 and March 11, 2023. They were incurred between February the 15, 2020 and March 11, 2023. So I will drill that word of incurred. So right now we're already in 2021. So you're getting RF and then you got past due bills from prior, from your 2020 years that you didn't pay. So what they're saying is that it has to be expenses that caused by pandemic in order you to use RF to pay. So our pandemic started uh, actually, in the state of Iowa, that was March 18. But I know the SBA 
had making February the 15th as the starting date for the country. So anything that is from February the 15th, 2020, that incurred in that period, that's where you can use this one to pay, okay? The incurred means that it happened and you haven't paid yet and you were going to pay it, it is incurred from before and then you can do it. If using RF grants for payroll, do not include any employee's portion of compensation exceeding 100,000 per year. So what they're saying is that if you have employees in your company who are paid a lot more than, you know, than, than average, so you got one or two of them is 100,000 per year and over. So they're saying that there is a cap to it. You cannot do more. 100,000 is most. You cannot be like, okay, I'm the owner. So I pay myself 500,000 a year. And I just suddenly increase my payroll and it go up really, really high, become unreasonable. You want to, you know, I want to say this. If you go up over 100,000, it's not eligible anyway. But if you are always paying yourself 20,000, now suddenly you go for $100,000 because now you had the money. I wouldn't say that's wrong because you deserve that. And you probably worked as hard as possible. And as a business owner, you deserve that. But it is possible when you get compliance reviewed, the, the auditor or the agent will ask you, what is, what's the basis for you to increase your salary from prior in 2019 was 20,000, now become 100,000. I'll give you a reason, which is one of the one of our clients, and we asked that question. So this is actually client's answer, which I thought it was really is, is really understandable and is very reasonable. So what happened is they used to have five employees in the company, but in year 2020, with the pandemic, there's nobody working anymore. And uh, the business owner said that the money they paid to the employee and was not even better, it was not better than the unemployment benefit. So no one works. So he and his wife are the only people in the store and doing deliveries and cooking and doing everything. So he increased the salary to 100,000 in the year, even though they shut down, they do not do sit-in, but the, the, the sales is less, but because of they are working, so the business is still staying. So with that, I think is reasonable because they got rid of, they, they actually didn't get rid of, they lost five employees and replaced by themselves. And, you know, it is, if it is 20,000 per employee, then we're looking at 100,000. So that would be, that would be a rationale and could be easily understood by the government agency, by the auditor. So you've got to have some rationale behind what you're doing. And not simply just because you know that is what, uh, uh, that is eligible expense. So you just want to expend it unlimitedly. It doesn't work, right? You got upper limit and you also got a reasonable, uh, a reasonable requirement behind it. All right. So of course, um, if you still have a question, share them with SBA regional offices and the National Restaurant Association. Because these are really the true leaders in this pandemic time for how restaurants operate. It is a new process for everybody, right? And so if there is a further doubt, ask SBA. If you have questions, you know, others, um, you know, for other kind of things and you, you know, you always have community CP here to back you up. And here, this is our website, communitycpa.com. And we have our webinars is all here, you see. And you can register here to know what we are talking about. Um, the next Saturday, which is August 28th. And our topic is possible tax changes by President Biden. So this new tax reform come out. A lot of people are very anxious about it. Tax accountants are very anxious about it because we want to know so we can plan taxes for our client. 
and just very NC, we want to know. So because of that, we're looking at it every day and it will give you what we know on that day. And plus we have different languages going on in the week. Monday is in Chinese, Wednesday is in Vietnamese and a Friday is in Spanish. And I hope you enjoy our webinar and I will conclude today right here and give us feedback and go on social media, give us a thumb up because only when you are happy and we will be happy. So we want to see you supporting us and encouraging us to do better job for you. All right, bye-bye.